Hey everybody, today we're going to be talking about the latest on how the invasion of Ukraine is affecting general aviation, and we'll learn more about our push toward unleaded avgas. Hey, plus come along on a beautiful sunrise flight in Hawaii, a helpful tip for instrument flying, all this and more in just a moment. This is AOPA Live This Week with Tom Haynes and Paul Harrop filling in for Alyssa Cobb. Well, hey, we have to get the lead out of avgas. That's general aviation's top priority right now. It's going to take all hands on deck to get it done. AOPA hosted a webinar on Wednesday about the effort. AOPA President Mark Baker, Gamma President Pete Bunsen, aviation fuel expert Paul Milner addressed the industry's commitment to that process. Now, during the webinar, AOPA announced an Avgas coalition. That's a significant part of bringing the industry together, and more than 100 members have already joined. We wanted all of the thought leaders in there, whether it's a type club, a regional flying group, you know, pilots association, um, parachuters, it doesn't matter. Anybody that's involved in general aviation and using piston aircraft um, should be part of this coalition because the, the more you know, the better off you're going to be. The FAA's effort to bring the industry and government together is called EAGLE, or Eliminate Aviation Gasoline Lead Emissions. EAGLE builds on the work of another FAA collaboration, the Piston Aviation's Fuel Initiative, or PAFI, which was introduced in 2013. Well, certainly it's a it's a big step forward you know path has been around and we're not saying that it uh, worked or didn't work we learned a lot is my view on the, the old process but it was time to reinvigorate the, with the urgency uh with all the stakeholders around moving forward with whatever process once we get a fuel that uh is acceptable whatever that is and whoever crosses that finish line first or even second or there's three players we want to find a pathway to get those fuels into the distribution into the consumer and being fully confident that those fuels are ready to go. So I think that's a, um, as I view the difference today in Eagle and having been around Pappy for a number of years, this is an urgency change. And the time is really now. I mean, the goal is by 2030, but that doesn't mean we have to wait until then. Right. Yeah, there's actually been a lot of progress uh, on several fuels, GAMI, of course. Uh, out of Oklahoma has uh, come a long way. Swift is working on a fuel, and we know that there's some others out there percolating along. And so we're, we're probably going to get there sooner, but we needed kind of the runway, if you yeah. will, uh, to make sure that we could get not only the fuels approved, but then all the infrastructure in the back end to get them manufactured and distributed out there as well. And, you know, the important thing is, you know, talking about the urgency of this, the EPA is probably going to designate uh, the lead in our fuels as a, as a hazard um, certainly by next year and probably start the process this year. And when that happens, then we really are against a deadline because we're going to start to see liability concerns crop up for some manufacturers and uh, that sort of thing. So uh, we need to be making good progress. Yeah, and a lot of deep background in that webinar. I would encourage everyone to, to go check it out. I learned a ton just working in the control room on it. And, you know, another thing I've seen on the Internet is, um, you know, people worried that, hey, is this the industry trying to take away the success that some of these individual fuel creators have right. made? Really, it's a way to uh, bring them to market and bring them into regulation, is it not? Yeah, and it's it's just uh, an, another means to make sure that we're kind of identifying all the all the uh, right candidates and um, building on all the other things that need to get done. You know, I, do, I compare it a lot to you know getting an airplane type certification. That's one step in the process, but then you have to get the production certificate, ramp up production, build the training infrastructure, build the maintenance infrastructure for the fleet that you're about to create, and that sort of thing. So there's a lot of moving parts to get it done and getting the fuel approved is just one of them. Yeah, deep dive into that all in the webinar. Check it out on our YouTube channel. Russian troops continue to invade Ukraine and the conflict is affecting general aviation companies in that country. Flight Design builds the light sport airplanes in Ukraine. They make the F2 and the CT series. And we're joined now by Tom Bagitti, president of Flight Design USA. So Tom, we're seeing reports just this morning that uh, Kherson, where the flight design factory is located, has been taken by Russian forces. Is the factory still open or was it shut down? Well, it was shut down as of, uh, as of yesterday. We had a uh, small group of people that were still there, the guards outside of the facility, and some of the engineering managers were still there. Um, but uh, as, of, as of today, it shut down. Wow. So what are you hearing from your employees? Is, is flight design opportunity offering opportunities for them outside of Ukraine? 
yes, in fact, we've uh, extended an invitation for anyone that uh, wants to move to the Czech Republic to come and work there. And we're uh, very busy right now setting up production in Czech Republic. We have a facility there that does uh, aircraft completions, and that's where our R&D facility is located and tooling is made there. So we're planning just to uh, increase staff and, uh, and the size of the, the buildings there. Right. So that sounds like that could have an impact on production rate, though I know you've got some airplanes on order and all the shifting of people and personnel and equipment uh, to the Czech Republic. That sounds like it might uh, cause some production problems, will it? Oh, yes. It'll, it'll be four to six months before we're producing airplanes again. Right. You know, at any rate, we may, might get a few out before that, but oh. it's going to take a while to get going again. Right. And I understand you also have a very personal connection to Ukraine. Your wife's family is there. Uh, yes. How are they? What are you hearing? And are you, are you able to stay in touch with them? Strangely, we have been able to keep in touch with everyone, including uh, many of the engineers at the factory. And, uh, and, and as an aside, another company that uh, manufactures in Ukraine, Aeropract, which also makes really nice airplanes, uh, I was in communication with uh, Yuri Yakovlev, the president of Aeropract, and he and many of his his people are all fine as well. So that's all good news. You know, you can make new molds and hmm. you can get a new building, but you can't replace friends and family and, uh, and people that we've worked with for over 20 years. Wow. All right, Tom. Well, thanks so much for sharing your information and update uh, with us. Uh, of course, uh, we're thinking of uh, all the folks in Ukraine and we hope that uh, your wife's family all stays safe and that your employees get out of there safely and that soon we see uh, airplanes rolling off the production line uh, um, at a higher rate in the Czech Republic. Thank you very much for the opportunity. So Paul, astounding. You yeah. know, here we are in the 21st century and we're seeing, you know, buildings blowing up, being blown up like this and the, and the interruption to commerce and life, lo life loss and all that sort of thing is, uh, it, it's a real shame. Yeah, I no, it's, it's a horrible uh, impact on people there. And you know, that's the, that's the thing, this war affects individuals, people. This is, this is not just some global political thing, this is hurting people. Um, right. And sadly, it's also hurting hardware. The world's largest airplane may be gone. Ukraine's official Twitter account reports that the only Antonov AN-225 was heavily damaged at an airfield near Kyiv by Russian forces. The airplane was originally designed in the 80s to transport the Soviet space shuttle after that, the AN-225 is used for cargo service. It was used several times for humanitarian aid. The six-engine behemoth has a max takeoff weight of over 1.3 million pounds. That's twice as much as a 747. The Ukrainians say they will rebuild the airplane. And the West is implementing crippling sanctions against Russia in response to that invasion, and that includes aviation. The FAA and the Department of Transportation have banned Russian aircraft from U.S. domestic airspace. And the Farnsborough International Air Show, one of the aviation industry's most significant events, also announced that Russia will not be allowed to participate in that show this July. Meanwhile, a longtime advocate for general aviation is retiring. Senator James Inhofe of Oklahoma announced that he'll retire from the Senate at the end of this year. Inhofe made numerous contributions to aviation through his nearly three-decade career. Well, you know, it's really been a pleasure and an honor working with Senator Inhofe and his staff for all these years. They've done so much. And, you know, Jim Inhofe is, best described him as a leader, a gentleman, and, and a pilot. And, you know, general aviation is a large part growing and vibrant in the United States today because of the senator's passion for flying and his years of dedicated public service to help make it so. And I, I just can't thank Senator Inhofe enough for all he's done for general aviation. Gonna miss him. Inhofe was instrumental working alongside AOPA on significant legislation, including the Pilots Bill of Rights, Basic Med, and legislation to keep U.S. aviation competitive in the global markets. Wow, it's, I can't imagine a world without Jim Inhofe in Congress. You know, I'm, I'm from Oklahoma. From the time I started paying attention to the news, Jim Inhofe was my senator. Right. And every job I've ever had as an adult, which has all been in, in television in one capacity or another, I've reported on him. Yep. My hometown station, Oklahoma City, Wichita Falls and Lawton again. And I thought when I came to AOPA 10 years ago, I wouldn't be reporting on Jim Inhofe. And who do I meet at Oshkosh? He flew his RV4 or Harmon <laughs> Rocket in. The guy is a pilot's pilot. 
And uh, yeah, it's it's wild to think that he's retiring. Yeah, and uh, he will be missed. He's done a lot for general aviation for sure. Well, the FAA is working to improve air safety in Alaska. They are installing eight new automated weather stations in remote parts of the state. Weather information from these stations will give pilots a better preview of the weather to expect before landing. The rugged terrain and vast remote areas make it difficult to predict the fast changing weather. Air safety is especially important to the rural and tribal communities in Alaska that are accessible only by air. The new weather stations should be in operation this October. And general aviation is also essential for transportation in Hawaii. But the Hawaii Department of Transportation wanted to close one of the state's most essential airports. Dillingham Airfield on Oahu was set to close until AOPA joined a massive effort by local pilots and business leaders to save it. AOPA Western Pacific Regional Manager Melissa McCaffrey played a major role in that effort. And as a way to thank her for all her hard work, Tom Sanders, owner of Paradise Air at Dillingham, gave Melissa the flight lesson of a lifetime. He took her on a sunrise flight in a light sport weight shift control aircraft. You ready to have some fun? I am. All right, cool. Let's do it. So this bar is parallel with the wing. I need to hold the wing level. It's not like an airplane where the wing is in place with the fuselage. So it moves, so I hold it level, I pull in. That keeps weight on the nose and keeps us on the ground. And when I want to lift off, all I do is let the bar out. How do you like my office window? Oh, I mean, this is incredible. Try this, put your left hand right here, okay. your right hand here. Now it's, it takes a lot more strength to fly from the back seat. So I'm gonna be your power steering for most of the flight whenever, yeah. you, want, you, whenever you want it. But I want you to know that if I wanna do a left turn, I'm gonna look for traffic like you would in a Cessna. We got a pretty darn good view. Yeah. If I pull our weight to the left, the sail is gonna shift on the framework. Gotcha. And the hang glider is gonna stay in a left turn. And I just want to do a little turn here around Dillingham. And how do you like how it flies? Oh, it's it's great. And yeah, it's really, really bird-like in my yeah. opinion. Because you're connected to the wing. You're not moving right. parts that move parts that move parts. You're directly connected to the wing like a surfer moving a surfboard yeah. or a snowboarder or wakeboarder. And that's why I prefer this aircraft over anything else. Yeah. Because it feels bird-like. Look, look at the view down here. It's unbelievable. I love my job. I mean, I love your job. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's go out over the water, pull your left hand towards my face. Put us into a little left roll. And if you see any whales, we can always teach turns around a whale. Okay? <laughs> nice. <laughs> Those are some surfers. Yep, surfers right yeah. there. Now, we're gonna go down the coast, so start bringing it, the right wing down by pulling your right hand towards my face. It's called Puena Point. Traffic Paradise One, base to final, full stop, ladder port. Basically, I'm landing runway 110. Soft landing. Is that one of your softest I mean, landing in wow. your life? <laughs> it was like butter. <laughs> All right. Good. Wow. Well, that looks awesome. <laughs> it does. What an amazing flight she had. Well, coming up after the break, a new autopilot option for Bonanzas. And see just how much Amelia Earhart's flight cap is worth. We'll be right back. It's a lot. I'm Jeff Owen. I have about 1,300 hours. I have uh, ratings single engine land, single engine sea, multi engine land, tailwheel endorsement. I'm halfway through my instrument rating, so my instructor is, uh, is walking me through icing, really important, obviously winds aloft, um, some of the additional features. In fact, just a week ago, we paged through every button on the XM Weather, serious XM Weather uh, page just to find out what's out there. I was actually startled at how much I was missing. Well, I like that uh, it's accessible on the ground. It's great for flight planning, especially in a slower airplane, um, even in the air cam. Uh, just being able to access and plan on the ground before you take off is a big plus for me. Hey, welcome back. Has to be one of the world's most expensive hats. A couple of weeks ago, we told you that Amelia Earhart's flight cap was on the auction block. Earhart wore the cap during her first flight across the Atlantic Ocean. The auction house thought it would bring in maybe 80,000 bucks or so. Well, not even close. 
It sold for more than eight hundred thousand dollars. I can't even think in those terms. Wow! I'll tell you what, the the shirt that the T-shirt that I wore uh, when I was sixteen years old, um, when I soloed for the first time, is hanging on my office wall at home, and I'll let it go for just eighty thousand. How's that? Anybody interested? <laughs> Maybe we'll uh, take a collection together or something. <laughs> Well, Southwest Airlines is giving high school students the opportunity to make some cash this summer. They're not buying a shirt. Just Thank give it up. Goodness. They are accepting applications for their internship program. It's for students who live near one of several designated hub airports. The internship will give students the opportunity to work alongside Southwest staff to see what it's like to work in the aviation industry. They're accepting applications until March 13th. Find more on the Southwest website. Hey, if you fly Bonanza, there's a new autopilot option for you. The Dynon 3-axis autopilot has been certified for the Beechcraft Bonanza 36 series. The autopilot integrates with the Dynon Skyview HDX. The autopilot can follow a flight plan and with a compatible navigator will fly any precision or non-precision approach. Yaw control is also an option for some airplanes. The full kit for a Skyview system and autopilot costs around $27,000 for a 36 series Bonanza. And glass panels like the Skyview have changed the way we fly, especially in the clouds. AOP Editor-at-Large Dave Hirschman has a quick tip for flying an instrument approach using synthetic vision. IFR pilots have a big mental shift to make when they switch from flying on the needles during the approach to landing with outside visual references. Today, however, GPS-derived synthetic vision makes this transition simple. Even when the airplane is in the clouds during an instrument approach, pilots with synthetic vision can control it in much the same way as they would on a sunny day. They essentially play an elaborate video game in which they place the green dot or flight path marker on the runway threshold and use coordinated pitch, power, bank, and rudder pressure to keep it there. Keeping the flight path marker on the image of the runway threshold keeps the airplane properly aligned and on glide path. The flight director, if the airplane is equipped with one, gets demoted from a primary to a supporting role using this technique, if the flight director is used at all. My personal preference is to unclutter the screen by getting rid of the flight director entirely, a suggestion that sounds like heresy to some veteran IFR pilots. The biggest benefit to this synthetic vision technique is that the mental shift that takes place when pilots go from heads down in the clouds to heads up in preparation for landing is minimal. They're already using coordinated controls and flying as they would in visual conditions throughout the approach and landing. The biggest difference is that on cloudy days, the real world is a lot less colorful than the screens would seem to indicate. Dave Hirschman, AOPA Live. You can find more instrument flying videos on our YouTube channel. And I got to tell you, the flight path marker is like cheating. You know, I'm, it's I'm working on my IFR now, but I'm doing it in steam gauges so I can do that. But I really look forward to transitioning to yeah. glass and trying that out. Yeah, it is pretty amazing what's out there today. And that's the show for this week. Thanks for spending some time with us. And we would love for you to take the time to consider joining AOPA if you're not already a member. Find out more at the link on your screen. We want you as an AOPA pilot. We'll see you back here next week. Purchasing your own aircraft is an exciting experience. AOPA Finance simplifies the process, saving you money with lower interest rates and hassle-free loans, so you get into your new aircraft sooner. AOPA Finance, the right approach to buying an aircraft.